Hello, guys. How are you today? I'm glad to be here with you again. Welcome to a new English class. Today we are going to continue learning a lot about English. And one important content that it is very necessary that you can learn today. So it's time to continue with our class presentation. In the second point, we have the social emotional content. I already said good morning, everyone. Now it's time to continue with our social emotional content. In order to develop the second step to our agenda, I'm gonna share I'm gonna share with you a video that is related with the donkey and the lion. Let me see. I'm gonna share my screen right now. And remember to follow the virtual classroom rules in order you can understand each activity you are gonna develop today. For today's class, we are gonna continue working in our student's book and practice book. So everyone prepare your materials, the materials you are gonna need to complete the activities for today's class. Let's continue with our social emotional content. Pay attention to this video and here we go. In the lion skin. There was once a donkey, always full of complaints. <sighs> Why does everyone make fun of me all the time? If only I lion, everyone would be afraid and look up to me. <sighs> I guess I look too weak. Oh! Oh! What's this? Oh! Oh, oh my! It's a lion! Oh, please, please don't eat me! I will never forget your kindness! <laughs> huh? Hmm. That's weird. Why isn't he moving? <coughs> Mr. Lion? Mr. Lion? Mr. Lion! What? It's the skin of a lion! With its pointy teeth sharp claws? <gasps> it looks scary just like a real one. Trying it on won't do harm, will it? <laughs> uh -huh. I look like a real lion. <laughs> Yeah. Just then, a rabbit came by the pond. Yikes! It, it's a lion! I do look like a real lion. <laughs> I can't wait to trick other animals. <laughs> the donkey in the lion's skin wandered around the forest. Everyone who ran away screaming. Oh, it's a lion! Run for your run, run, run. Life. Not me! Not me! Run! 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 <laughs> this is so fun! I bet I'll even sound like a lion right now. <laughs> Yee -haw! Yee -haw! Out of the way! The king of the forest is here! Yee -haw! Yee -haw! Ah! Ah! 
<laughs> Wait a minute. That doesn't sound like a lion. Yeah, it sounds strange. Just then, a strong wind blew. Oh, no, no, not now. <laughs> well, 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 look who's here. I knew it. He didn't sound like the lion at all. Everyone listen. The donkey fool. Oh, I'm... <laughs> Well, this was our social emotional content. Did you like the video? What can you tell about the video? What can you say about the video? What is the model you can learn through the video? This was interesting, right? What you have to do is don't bother others. Don't bother others. Um, well, as I told you before, this was our social emotional content. Now we are going to continue with our class development. To our class development, we are going to continue talking about must and mustn't. Did you remember this? We studied this content in the previous class. Now we are going to continue with this. Must, mustn't, have to, don't have to. And I have in here another presentation in order you can understand better this. Let me see. Here we have must versus have to, meaning. I have in here a short explanation about this important content. Let me see, I'm gonna do something. Well, we have the doctor and the patient. The doctor says, you must rest for two weeks. The patient, I have to rest for two weeks. Must, this is the explanation for the use of must. Obligation that comes from the speaker. This is an obligation. It means you are gonna use must for obligations. Don't forget this. The speaker thinks it's necessary. Here we have some examples about them. Manager, you must be here at seven. This is an obligation. You must be here at seven, the smoker says, I must stop smoking. It's an obligation. The obligation comes from the smoker. The smoker thinks it's necessary. For that reason, it is called obligation. Must. What about have to? This is an external obligation. Another person thinks it's necessary. Another person thinks it's necessary. The worker, I have to be there at seven. I have to be there at seven. What about the smoker? I have to stop smoking. The obligation comes from the doctor. The doctor thinks it's necessary. Well, mustn't. Mustn't is a prohibition. Prohibition. You can't do something. It's necessary that you don't do it. This is a example you are going to use. Mustn't. Uh, what about the examples we have in here? You mustn't wait here. You can't wait here. It's not allowed. He mustn't call her at work. He can't call her at work. It's necessary that he doesn't call her at work. These are the examples for mustn't. Remember this prohibition. Don't have to, 
not obligation. Don't have to, no obligation. You can do something, but you don't need to do it. Not necessary. The examples, you don't have to wait here. You don't need to wait here, not necessary. He doesn't have to call her at, home, at work. He doesn't need to call her if he doesn't want to do it. It's not necessary. If you have any question about this content, you can ask me the questions you have in our live class, and I'm gonna answer all the questions you have. Remember, must, you are gonna use must for obligation when something is an obligation. Have to, that's an external obligation. Another person thinks it's necessary. Mustn't. This is a prohibition. You can't do something. It's necessary that you don't do it anymore. Um, don't have to. Not obligation. You can do something, but you don't need to do it. Not necessary. Well, guys, if you want to take notes about the... Um, meanings for each of these um, short contents, you can do it in this moment. You can take notes. Take notes if you want. Must, have to, mustn't, and don't have to. Well, let's continue with our class development. In this moment, you are going to open your student's book. I'm going to share with you the page, the page in which we are going to work today. A student's book. A student's book, remember we are on unit two. Page number 25. This is a page in which we are going to continue working right now. Page number 25. This one. Page 25. Are you ready? Yes, you are going to say, right? Well, let's continue. As you can see here, we have the content that is mustn't and don't have to remember i already explained you something about this mustn't and don't have to remember that mustn't is a prohibition and don't have to is not necessary right you are gonna decide if you are gonna do the things or not um well according to the activity number one it says circle through or false, then read and check your answers. We have two sentences in here. Circle true or false. First, you are going to circle true or false. Then you are going to read and check your answers. Number one, tornadoes only last for a few minutes. What do you think? Is it true or false? I'm gonna read again. Tornadoes only last for a few minutes. True or false? Think. I think the answer is true. Then we are gonna discover if this 
answers are correct or not. I think it's true. Number two, the wind inside a tornado always moves in the same direction. That's false. I think it's false. What do you think? True or false? For me, it's false, the second. The first one is true and the second is false. Now we are going to read this important information about tornadoes. We are going to read together at the count of three. One, two, three. Tornado chasers by Nathan Spiner. Tor tornadoes are fast, dangerous, and the most violent storms on Earth. Wind speeds can be as high as 480 kilometers per hour. Some tornadoes only last for minutes, but bigger ones can last for hours and travel over 130 kilometers. They can also do a lot of damage. In the USA, there are about 1,000 tornadoes every year. Can you imagine this? 1,000 tornadoes every day. And they kill an average of 60 people. That is scary. What do you think? Is it scary? Scary for me, yes. For me, yes, it's very scary. But some people look for them and then chase them. By the way, it there is a movie about tornadoes. Have you ever seen a movie related with tornadoes? The majority of you are gonna say yes, teacher. In my case, yes too. Let's continue. Why do they do it? I spoke to professional storm chaser Alexa Wilson. She said, we don't have to chase tornadoes, but we do it because we want to understand them better. It's exciting too. This is the information about tornadoes. What do you think? Then we have in here some interesting tornado facts. The first, in the northern hemisphere, tornadoes rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Counterclockwise direction. South of the Ecuador, they rotate, rotate in a clockwise direction. These are some interesting tornado facts. Now, we are going to listen an audio. Then we are going to classify Alexa's advice. Pay attention to the audio. Remember, here we have optional, doesn't, don't have to. Obligatory, mustn't. We have use expensive equipment, be tornado season for a tornado to occur, get too close, get too close, chase them by yourself, exceed the speed limit, be impatient, drive a special vehicle and wear a helmet. These are the sentences you are gonna listen in the audio. I'm gonna play in this moment. Pay attention please and complete the activity. Track 14. Listen and classify Alexa's advice. Pay attention. Hello, Alexa. Hi there. Thanks for finding time to talk to me today. Can you give me some advice about chasing tornadoes? Sure, of course. Okay. First of all, where and when can you see a tornado? In the United States, we get tornadoes from the Rocky Mountains to the Atlantic coast. Tornadoes are more common during tornado season, which is from April to June. However, it doesn't have to be tornado season for a tornado to occur. If you want to chase a tornado, you mustn't be impatient. Sometimes we wait all day and we don't see one, so it can be a bit frustrating. 
Is storm chasing expensive? No, it isn't. You don't have to use expensive equipment. I just carry my cell phone along with a camera and a laptop computer. And you don't have to drive a special vehicle. However, road safety is important, very important. You mustn't exceed the speed limit, and you mustn't get too close to a tornado. You should always keep a safe distance of several kilometers because if you get too close, the tornado can carry you and your car away. Another thing about driving is that you mustn't chase tornadoes by yourself. If you're looking for tornadoes, you need another person to drive the car and be watching the road. Okay. Finally, do you wear any special clothes when you're storm chasing? Well, I usually wear waterproof clothes. You know, being near a storm with the car window open, it can get very wet. But you don't have to wear a helmet or anything like that. Thanks, Alexa. And good luck with the storm chasing. Thank you. Track. Listen one more time. Fourteen. Listen and classify Alexa's advice. Hello, Alexa. Hi there. Thanks for finding time to talk to me today. Can you give me some advice about chasing tornadoes? Sure, of course. Okay. First of all, where and when can you see a tornado? In the United States, we get tornadoes from the Rocky Mountains to the Atlantic coast. Tornadoes are more common during tornado season, which is from April to June. However, it doesn't have to be tornado season for a tornado to occur. If you want to chase a tornado, you mustn't be impatient. Sometimes we wait all day. What about the first? You mustn't be impatient. You mustn't be impatient. Day and we don't see one, so it can be a bit frustrating. Is storm chasing expensive? No, it isn't. You don't have to use expensive equipment. I just carry. You don't have to use expensive equipment. This is the option about this. You don't. You don't have to use expensive equipment my cell phone along with a camera and a laptop computer. And you don't have to drive a special vehicle. However, you don't have to drive a special vehicle. This is the next one. You don't have to drive a special vehicle. Road safety is important, very important. You mustn't exceed the speed limit and you mustn't get... You mustn't exceed the speed limit. This is the other obligatory mustn't. You mustn't exceed the speed limit. Get too close to a tornado. You should always keep... You mustn't get too close to a tornado. You mustn't get too close. Let's continue. Keep a safe distance of several kilometers because if you get too close, the tornado can carry you and your car away. Another thing about driving is that you mustn't chase tornadoes by yourself. If you're... You mustn't chase them by yourself. You mustn't chase them by yourself. Looking for tornadoes, you need another person to drive the car and be watching the road. Okay. Finally... Do you wear any special clothes when you're storm chasing? Well, I usually wear waterproof clothes. You know, being near a storm with the car window open, it can get very wet. But you don't have to wear a helmet or anything like that. You don't have to wear a helmet. You don't have to wear a helmet. Thanks, Alexa. And good luck with the storm chasing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, here we have the activity related with the listening activity. Um, that is, listen and classify Alexa's advice. Remember, these are optional, doesn't, and don't have to. And you are going to use mustn't 
for obligation, obligatory. I suppose everybody finish this activity. Then we have in here, write out Nathan's note. You don't have to use expensive equipment. These are some sentences that you are going to take into account related with the audio. Well, we are going to continue with our practice book in this moment. So everyone, close your student's book and now open your practice book. Let me see. I'm going to show you the book right now. This is the page. Page number 23 in your practice book. Page 23 in your practice book. What you are going to do here, remember that we are talking about must, mustn't, and have to. Um, number one, the instructions read the text and mark with a check who does each short. Let me see. I'm going to... Share with you the other page. And please complete the activity. Complete the activity. First of all, we are going to read the text. This is the instruction. Read the text and mark who does each shirt. Let's read together. One, two, three. My name is Eva. I have two brothers, Paul and Miguel. We live in Florida. And there are often hurricanes here in the summer. Before a hurricane, we all have chores to do. I have to do four different chores. Paul has to do four chores as well. And Miguel only has to do three. One person has to check on the neighbors. We all have to take food to the basement. And two of us have to close the shutters. Well, this is the text. Now we have in here the activity. Take in the dogs. Take in the dogs. Who? Paul or Eva? What do you think? Paul or Eva? Uh, take in the dogs. What do you think? We are going to choose Paul. Then close the shutters. Uh, we have in here. Search the cell phones. We are going to choose this. Share. Oh. Charge the cell phones. Miguel, we are going to say. Take food to the basement. Um, buy drinking water. Who? Who buys drinking water? Then we say, unplug the electrical appliances. Two of us, a Paul and Eva. Then check on neighbors. Miguel, we are going to choose Miguel. Well, 
Let's continue. Complete the sentence. Number one. Eva has to share the cell phones and plug the electrical appliance. She also has to. She also has to. Here we have the information. Um, we are going to say, um, Eva has to share the cell phones and unplug the electrical appliances. She also has to, we are talking about Eva. Um, she also has to, what else? Take the food to the basement. Take the food to the basement. Let me see, I'm gonna share with you again. Right. Take the food to the basement. You are gonna write this. Take the food to the basement. Wait me some seconds. The page is loading right now. Right, take the food to the basement. Take the food to the basement. Here too, he also take the food to the basement. Well, we are going to complete this activity in the next class. We are going to do it together. Let me see the next activity. This one. The second and last activity for today's class. If you want to ask me questions about the activities we are developing right now, you can do it in our next class, in our live classes we are gonna have. Um, what about activity number two? Look and complete the safety measures with must or mustn't and the verbs. Must or mustn't. Um, what about this? Must or mustn't? Mustn't, right? Mustn't, let me see. That's mustn't. What's the verb? You mustn't stay outdoors. Number two. Number two, you must, look at the picture. According to the picture, you are gonna answer this. You must close all windows. You must close all windows. 
Then we have in here, you mustn't, must, mustn't ride your bicycle. Ride your bicycle. Then we have number four. Number four, you must, you must carry, you must carry a cell phone with you all at all times. And the last, you mustn't fly, mustn't fly. These are the verbs. Now we are going to submit and we are going to close this. Mustn't. What about mustn't? I think that the spelling is, let me see, mustn't stay. Mustn't. And these are the correct options. These are the correct options you are going to choose. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to stop the presentation. And this is all for today's class. Remember, if you want to ask me any question about these activities, you can do it in our live classes. We are going to continue working on these activities on Richmond Learning Platform in our live class. Okay. Well, we are going to finish the class in this moment. Thank you all for being here. And we are going to continue in the next class. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Take care.